es algo que me dijo mi abuelo, ¿eh? Ey, es algo que me dijo mi abuelo. Resulta que la Gabe tiene, tiene un, un sistema que pica. El agave, cuando se corta, su savia no pica. Y cuando yo muy pequeño, mi abuelo y mi padre me llevaban al campo. Me subían arriba de una canasta piscadora y se la echaban al, al hombro. Y yo muy pequeño iba con ellos. Ya una vez en los surcos donde se plantaba el agave, pues yo me encargaba de llevar los hijuelos e irlos poniendo en el surco. Y me picaba. Y yo, yo le decía a mi padre, a mi abuelo, que me picaba. Y un día mi abuelo me dijo, te apures, te pican porque no te conocen. Pero cuando seas grande te va a dar de comer a ti y a tu familia. Ay, salud. Santiago de Tequila is a town located in the state of Jalisco, about 40 miles from the city of Guadalajara. As travelers wind their way along the roads into Tequila, they soon find themselves surrounded by oceans of blue agave fields, spreading out as far as the eye can see, clinging to the hillsides of extinct volcanoes, nestled in between rocky terrain, struggling to find a foothold in this unforgiving, waterless landscape. But it is a magical place, whose red volcanic soil has given birth to millions of agave plants over the centuries. Plants that have provided sustenance and a livelihood for rural farmers from the Aztec period until today. But the most recognizable byproduct of the agave is tequila. No other drink is surrounded by as many stories, myths, and legends as tequila. It transcends simple definition by reaching into the heart of Mexico, blending the indigenous and Spanish cultures, and reminding us that the humble agave plant is a living symbol of man's desire to survive, to conquer the elements, and shape the dreams of the future. Thousands of years ago, the volcanoes of Jalisco erupted, leaving layers of rich volcanic ash over hundreds of miles. From these ashes sprung the agave plants, a gift from the gods. Legend has it that a lightning bolt was sent down from above to punish an unruly goddess. The ensuing metamorphosis, a sweet, seductive nectar that quickly caught the attention of early farmers. It wasn't long before the early Aztec and Mayan rulers discovered the magical powers of the agave plant and its early alcoholic form, pulque, meaning nectar of the gods. The consumption of pulque was highly restricted in Aztec society. Severe penalties for abuse were meted out to disobedient peasants. The nectar became a ritual beverage, a medicine and a ceremonial offering to the gods and deities. Pulque, with its high content of proteins, carbohydrates, and vitamins, has remained essential to the diet in the central highlands of Mexico since pre-Aztec times. When the Spaniards arrived, they were granted equal status with the Aztec rulers and soon introduced their own distilling methods. Although history credits the Spanish with creating the early version of tequila, called vino de mezcal, some historians would disagree. One thing was certain. Mezcal, with its higher alcohol content, would become so popular in Mexico that the king of Spain took every opportunity to control its production and taxation. Its production and taxation. The culture of agave began developing throughout Mexico hundreds of years before the arrival of the Spanish in 1519. 
dozens of species of the plant could be found from northern Mexico to the central highlands. This extraordinary drought-resistant plant became a staple in the diet of the early natives and provided them with a rich source of nutrients, calories, and liquid, and of course, alcohol. Las actuales investigaciones que han realizado los arqueólogos, en especial el trabajo de la doctora María del Carmen Serra, nos están indicando una cultura de maguey mezcal desde Paquimé en Chihuahua hasta Oaxaca. Eh, los trabajos de María del Carmen han concluido de manera de que se ha demostrado que los hornos eran para cocimiento de mezcal y esta demostración ya es a nivel de espectrografía. Se trabaja actualmente en buscar por análisis los residuos en las piezas de cerámica para plantear o demostrar la destilación prehispánica. Eso nos llevaría a la conclusión de que tenemos toda una cultura de mezcal simultánea a la cultura del pulque que es solamente de la mesa central. Pulque, the historical predecessor of mezcal and tequila, wielded a heavy sociological influence during both pre-Hispanic and colonial periods of Mexican history. The agave salmiana, or maguey, was one of the most sacred and important plants in ancient Mexico, having a privileged place in mythology, religious rituals, and the Mesoamerican economy. During this period, pulque appears in a number of graphic representations. El pulque, como bien sabemos, es una bebida que se extrae de, de maguey y tiene una antigüedad, los primeros testimonios eh, son testimonios materiales, datan del 600, del año 6500 antes de la llegada de los españoles. Conocían cómo sacarle el mayor beneficio, tanto como con, texti, con textiles y eh, en cuanto a, a usos medicinales, curativos y también espirituales. De todo esto nos han dejado testimonios eh, cronistas, misioneros, de la talla de Fray Bernardino de Sahagún. Bernardino Sahagún, born in 1499, was a Spanish Franciscan missionary to the Aztec people of Mexico. He arrived shortly after the conquest of Mexico City with 12 other missionaries sent by the King of Spain. While converting and teaching near Mexico City, he learned to speak Nahua, the language of the native peoples, and compiled one of the richest sources of information on Aztec life before the conquest. Por los testimonios que nos han dejado estos eh, misioneros, sabemos que el uso del del pulque en el altiplano era, estaba muy extendido en los ceremoniales religiosos. La, el consumo de bebidas alcohólicas y alucinógenos ha sido un elemento en todas las culturas para entrar en relación con, la de, con las deidades, en todas las culturas a lo largo de todas las civilizaciones. En México prehispánico no fue diferente. Los eh, indígenas tenían muchas deidades que estaban relacionados con el consumo y la producción de pulque. Unlike many of his fellow Spaniards, Sahagún had seen in the Aztec culture a profoundly different way of conceptualizing the world and man's place within it. He believed that the native Indians had been effective in maintaining their own society. To him, they had displayed discipline in countering corrupt forces, attending to the needs of their peoples and preserving order. With the conquest, that order had been broken, perhaps unintentionally, and perhaps by necessity, as the Christian conquerors dealt with the things of idolatry and the devil's work. But with no new discipline to replace the existing order, the native societies became fragmented and chaos set in. Alcohol that had once been strictly controlled by the Aztec society was now becoming pervasive and destructive. 